BYD is outselling Tesla in battery electric vehicles in China. VW is outselling them in battery electric vehicles in all of Europe. We think in, in, in the U.S., Ford will probably take that mantle or GM next year. That was the infamous Gordon Johnson saying that he thinks Ford or GM will outsell Tesla in the US in 2022 with EVs. And he's saying that with a completely straight face. If you're not familiar with Gordon Johnson, he's been one of the strongest Tesla bears for years. And despite Tesla's astronomical success, he hasn't changed his mind. And it also just happens to be that Gordon Johnson is one of the worst Wall Street analysts around these days. But let's look at the numbers. This isn't what I think. This is factual. Let's look at the numbers. This isn't what I think. This is factual. He is ranked 14,914 out of 15,513 experts with an average return of negative 6.3%. Again, this isn't what I think, this is just factual. So when Johnson says that he thinks Ford or GM will outsell Tesla in EVs in the US in 2022, just based off his track record alone, I'd say it probably wouldn't happen, but that's not good enough for me. Let's take a look at the numbers to double check, and don't worry, this isn't gonna take long. In 2021, in the US alone, Tesla sold around 350,000 EVs. We don't have the exact number because Tesla doesn't break down their sales like that. In that same year, Ford sold around 27,000 EVs in the US, or about 8% of Tesla's sales, which given that it's on the back of the Mach-E entirely, that's pretty impressive. And GM, the global leader in EVs, sold about 22,000, including their 26 EV sales for the fourth quarter. Clearly, neither of these companies is even close to Tesla with regards to EV sales in the US market. And in fact, if you took both Ford and GM's combined EV sales for the last five years, they wouldn't even make up a third of Tesla's sales for 2021. That's the kind of difference we're talking about here. It's night and day. For GM or Ford to catch up to Tesla's 2021 numbers, they'd have to increase their sales by about 15 times, which obviously isn't going to happen. But even that isn't the full reality because that was Tesla's 2021 sales. And as we all know, Tesla is never standing still. In 2022, Tesla is planning to open Giga Texas. Actually, it's supposed to be on April 7th in just a couple weeks. And that plant will dramatically increase Tesla's production capacity, among other benefits. And to make Gordon Johnson look even more ridiculous, both GM and Ford have basically released their production goals for EVs for 2022, and they're not even close to Tesla's. GM's goal is to sell significantly less than 100,000 in the US, and Ford's is a little harder to estimate, but it might be somewhere around 100,000. So look, we just gotta call it like it is, Gordon Johnson is lying right now. He knows it, we know it, everybody knows it. There is virtually no way that GM or Ford will catch Tesla in 2022, and it's an absurd thing to say. Even Mary Barra, GM CEO, has said that their goal is to try and catch Tesla by 2025, which isn't realistic, and I broke down the exact details on why it won't happen in the video, but even that is more realistic than what Gordon Johnson is saying. So when he says stuff like this, all we can say is that Gordon Johnson is a total joke, plain and simple. But of course, he doesn't stop there. He says that every single Tesla competitor is beating Tesla in range. Check this out. Every single car out there that's coming to the US can either match or beat them um, in real world mileage. And again, he's just lying to everybody. In fact, if we look at the list of the longest range electric cars in 2022, Tesla has four of the top six. And keep in mind, Tesla only makes four vehicle models. So all four of them are in there. Also, shout out to Lucid on the range there. As an EV enthusiast, that is some seriously impressive range and even more importantly, efficiency. They're getting that mind bending 520 miles of range with a 118 kilowatt hour battery pack, which isn't that much bigger than the Model S's 100. But back to Johnson, he did say real world mileage, which is tricky to know what that actually means, but these ranges are from the EPA, so I'm gonna go with those. But it's clear that if all Tesla models are in the category of EVs with the longest range, all of them, then Johnson is wrong saying that every single car out there can beat Tesla's range. It's stuff like this that makes Gordon Johnson so frustrating, but also so funny, because he clearly doesn't live in the same reality as the rest of us. He has no basis in what's actually going on, but he still says stuff like this. 
Let's look at the numbers. This isn't what I think, this is factual. But when we actually do look at the numbers, he's laughably wrong. This is how he's earned himself a painfully low Wall Street analyst rating because he clearly has his own opinion and he won't let the numbers stand in the way of that opinion. And that's totally fine. But what goes along with that wrong opinion and not reacting to the numbers is a negative average return. But it's this last thing he says that just blows my mind with the level of sheer stupidity. And I'm not trying to be rude, but this guy is an analyst. Their job is to see and predict trends. And he says this. Uh, uh, battery electric cars were only 2.6% of global auto sales. Year to date, battery electric cars are trending at about 5% of global auto sales. So when you ask Ford, who's been doing this for 100 years, GM, who's been doing this for 100 years, BW, to completely change their entire company to go after a 5% market share, it's not that advantageous. This is just next level stupid. He just said that the global EV sales were 2.5, now they're 5% of total vehicle sales. My research shows it's actually more like 8.5%, but we'll use his low number because it still proves the point. He's saying 5% just isn't enough to concern legacy auto. What he isn't acknowledging, and I would say intentionally, is that EV sales just doubled in one year. Doubled. That amount of growth cannot be ignored. That's the start of a trend that's going to blast off. And it's a trend that's been coming for years. It's called the S-curve, where the start of growth is relatively slow, but as adoption picks up, it absolutely skyrockets. So here's a graph of global EV sales, and he's saying he can't see a trend. He's saying, why would Legacy Auto care about EVs? They're a fraction of total vehicle sales while staring directly at this chart. It is just unbelievable what he's saying. Nobody sees a doubling of sales year over year and says, who cares about that market? But then he says this. If you, if you took a step back and you look at the amount of cars Tesla sells, right, not the market cap, the, the 800 and, or the roughly 900,000 cars they're gonna sell this year versus VW selling 11 million. Like these guys aren't worried about BEVs. So I think there's other technologies that are very promising, fuel cell and hydrogen. And yeah, he's totally right. VW, GM, Ford, they clearly don't care about that nearly a million vehicles that Tesla sold. That's why none of them have formally stated their plans to move to being fully electric. Not Ford, not GM, and definitely not Volkswagen. They don't care about that 5% of the market that for sure won't continue to grow in the coming years. Look, I hope Gordon Johnson has a great life and I've got no ill will towards the guy, but if he keeps up predictions like these, I think he's gonna have a better career in comedy than on Wall Street. If you liked this video, leave a like and subscribe. If you appreciate someone taking a stand against these Wall Street analysts like this one, consider supporting me on Patreon. Huge thank you to my current Patreon members for allowing me to make this video. Seriously, you guys, the support means the world to me and allows me to keep making videos like this, which is my dream job. Also, if you find any media outlets or articles that you want me to look into, send them my way. My email and Twitter are down below. And if you've sent me something recently and I haven't gotten back to you, I've been getting pretty swamped with emails and I'm having trouble replying to everyone, but I still want you to send articles that you find. Just don't take it personally if I don't send you a reply. All right, peace out.